Hi, I'd like to talk to you today about creating audio vocal loops, what you can do with it and how useful it is to improve speech language, to learn languages, to improve singing, and also improve global wellness because your inner ear works with your whole system. I'm joined today by Celia Delaney, who has pre-recorded material. She is a professional speech coach for senior professionals who want to present in public. She is herself an actress in her own right and also teaches English language. So without further ado, Celia. Hi, I just wanted to let you know about a little piece of kit called the Tomatisse Infinity Headphones. That's these that I'm wearing. What these do is that they create an audio vocal loop using this microphone to feed back my own voice into my ears in an amplified way. Now, the benefit of this is that my voice sounds much nicer with these on than it does normally. Very like when you sing in the shower and suddenly you can sing well. Well, that's because the tiles are creating a lovely acoustic effect for you. And that's what that's doing here. So if you want to improve your confidence in speaking, this is a really great way to supplement other work that you might be doing on your speaking. So give it a go. It's about 10 minutes a day and you can look on the Tomatis website. Um, I'm not a consultant, but I just use them myself as a consumer and I've advised one or two other people to use them where I think it might be helpful. They also have a YouTube channel as well that you can subscribe to to understand more about the science behind this uh, where they'll talk about sound processing in particular and understanding how that works in the brain. So I hope that helps with your confidence because I'd love everyone to be able to speak in a way that makes them feel happy with themselves. And that is what will happen with these. Great. Well, thank you, Celia. That's the advert for tomatoes. And now I want to look at really more practical steps you can take what we're going to do. So let's think about your kit and let's move on. So basic kit, you can either use an infinite headset or a full brain. They're going to give you the audio vocal loop. I'm not sure there's anything else on the market. And it is interesting. The technology in them is going to enhance your speech. But in many ways, what you're hearing is your real speech. And it will make your brain work harder through bone conduction in order to create better sound processing, which creates better speech. You unconsciously improve quite dramatically. So your objective is to get better acuity of sound processing, because once your sound processing improves, your speech automatically improves. So you're creating this loop between your ear, your speech and your brain to improve the quality. And that improves your comprehension as well as your speech. You'll find it much easier. And for those people who've had issues with sound processing, once it's sorted, they'll find their reading comprehension as well improves. When you're working on your inner ear, it's not just going to make you better at processing sound, it affects your global wellness. So your inner ear, your vestibular system, also regulates things to do with your motor skills, your balance, your acceleration, deceleration senses. It affects your optical nerve. So when you're reading for meaning, it will impact. It can affect your facial muscles and your ability to understand other people's emotions. It, as we said, it gives you a better sound range. So that's going to affect your musicality as well as basic comprehension. You feel better. Hearing a full range of sound affects your peripheral vision. It's all quite nice. You need to think about the fact that if you're working in a foreign language, you need to have t recordings of the target language to work to. There's no point chi learning Chinese, to be honest, working with an English speaker. If I teach you Chinese, A, it will be bad because my Chinese is very bad, but also you're going to get the wrong sound range. So native speakers speak in a different sound range. Therefore, it's really useful to have the correct sound range to work to. 
Equally, if you're trying to learn English, it is really useful to work with a native English speaker to get a really good, good sense of what that sound is. Even if you speak English as a first language, you need to work with really good recordings, really good um, speech, because you are going to reproduce that. If all you hear as a child is low quality English, that is how your ear is going to tune. So when we're going to work on retuning, we're going to think about what the sound is that you're going to work to. That's quite important. It's why I got Celia in to do the recordings, because I want really good English language recordings for my clients and for people worldwide. So what else are you gonna do with this equipment? So I say to absolutely every single one of my clients, you are going to choose a happy song. I don't care if you're depressed, not depressed. I don't care what your issue is, have a happy song. Because having one song which you sing every day, over and over again, until you know it absolutely by heart, it makes you happier. So you get to the point it's absolutely in you and you know it really, really well. And you've been practicing with your audio vocal loop, singing away. This is how I got through Brexit. I do not joke. I learned the March of the Women, the suffragette song. Do, 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 do. And I immediately feel happier. It makes me move along at a different pace. I feel I can survive Brexit, which has not been a happy experience for a micro business because we can't get goods in and out of Britain very easily. But doing that means you've got a song to fall back on for life. Literally, you're in a difficult spot, you go back to your happy song, it immediately makes your heart rate and your breathing regulate far better. If you've sung a happy song as part of a team or a family, when you come together and sing that happy song, you come into tune with each other. I would recommend every team, whether you're playing sport, whether you're a company team, whatever, get a song, sing it together, get a really happy buzz. Because when people sing together, they come into tune together. But, you know, you can have your own happy song and you know, you know, and you want to choose one that's really just happy and got a bit of beat to it. The other thing is, if you finding 10 minutes a day of talking, hard going, put it to something like singing in the car. I knew at 50 that I was having difficulty driving and staying awake. It's boring activity, tootling along up a motorway to see clients or whatever. It could be four hours there and back if I, you know, there's a two hour drive to a client. I would get bored. I'd, I knew it was dangerous and I wanted to get my um, alertness up. So one day I decided to experiment with the equipment. So I sang for four happy hours all the way to Oxford and all the way back. By the end, I couldn't stand the equipment. But the next day when I woke up, my eyes were working so much better. And I could see the world much more sharply. And I had got night vision, I found that evening, and I haven't lost it. Just practicing every day in the car, don't do four hours, that was mad. But, you know, 20 minutes a day, driving to work, singing along, you can make a massive difference to your sound processing. Singing along to musicals is really good. I do it a lot with youngsters who are very angry. I find that things like West Side Story, they suddenly get, yeah, I get how they feel and they can sing and dance and get out all those life frustrations. Blues Brothers, another really good musical. If you're working with little children, maybe Lion King. Whatever is the musical that you can relate to that makes you feel good, choose that musical, sing all the songs to death and create a really good audio vocal loop. Back in the day when we were trialing these in schools, what we were finding was that students who had some reading difficulties and we needed to do auditory sound processing work with them, but there was no budget. It was quite a low budget way of getting their sound processing up was to just 
get them in a room, maybe five of them on four brains, singing along to musicals for 10 minutes a day. They were quite happy to do it. It wasn't a burden, but just that routine. When we came back to screen them, we could see a very big movement in their cell processing. And that was quite low cost intervention. If you are studying and you need to revise notes, I can't recommend too highly reading with the forebrain on. You're just reading them out aloud to yourself. You need to read the notes anyway, so you may as well wear the forebrain and read them. And that gives you some purpose to your reading. When I was trialing these with taxi drivers, we have a lot of taxi drivers where I live who don't speak English as a first language. They are driving Uber taxis, etc. And they've got to get through the British citizenship exam. I lent one of them a bit of kit. When I returned, it wasn't one person using it. There were shifts using it. So other men were coming in, half hour shifts, and throughout the day, something like 24 people were using one kit. Had to keep being recharged, but you can still use it while it's on charge because they found for themselves it was so effective. They'd been studying and studying and could remember nothing. Now they could change their sound range to English. Now they could change their recall of what they needed to learn for the exam. It was very effective. I've used it a lot with students who've got very little time to revise for exams. So for studies, it is really useful. And so of course the student doesn't really notice they're changing their sound range and improving their recall. And at the same time, they do what they have to do. For those of us with more time, you might like to memorize poems or rhymes. I like memorizing poems. I like poetry. Me and my son like chucking them around. And I like silly poems. And it's fun to do as a family. You might want to read aloud in the foreign language you want to improve. So back in my dark past, we had a, a Mrs. Finch who taught us French, who made us say endlessly, il est orange, il est rouge. But practicing really good pronunciation, reciting poetry, etc., and speeches. And it's one of the things I have got Celia to do for English is do some short readings of simple rhymes that people can memorize and just listen to. Listen to and repeat and listen to and repeat until they tune their ear to good English. And simply doing it 10 minutes a day, you will see that people's speech and language improves. So reciting along with ideal recordings is a really good thing to do. And reciting with children. Children like they, they've got favourite books. You read and read and read and read. If you're going to read with your children, get the old forebrain out. And as you read to them, you will improve your English as well as theirs. And when you're walking along, you find the children like to rec recite things like bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. We're not afraid. Or, you know, each peach bear plum. I spy Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb in the cupboard. I spy Mother Hubbard. Just being able to recall, and for children, if they've got that much recall, you're building vocabulary, you're building rhythm, which is important for understanding sense of language, and you are giving them a terrific auditory memory. You're not necessarily doing a lot of reading of these, you are reciting them over and over, you're building up that auditory sound processing range. So absolutely anything. Sound processing is powerful stuff, the particular kit. So keep it positive. Don't sit and read something deeply depressing. It's not good for you because this is magnifying your feelings. So if you're doing something positive, my experience, it makes you feel jolly positive, which is why I tend to push my clients to very happy, positive songs. Keep a track of the time. Don't do a four hour drive to Oxford and back with it. You know, if you're over 50, you can experiment on yourself. But reality is you're much better off doing 10, 20 minutes a day, every day, and just making it part of your routine. And keep videos of yourself. You don't need me to come and 
you know, check how you're doing, you will find when you look back that you can see you've changed. I can look back and see my TED talk from 10 years ago. I know I am different. I know I've been messing about with sound therapy equipment and it has changed my sense of well-being. Whatever you're doing, keep it fun because the more relaxed and open the body is, the faster it changes. Whereas if it turns into something miserable, everybody locks up and you actually don't learn. You don't progress. You don't make the changes you want to make. So Celia is going to do a series of recordings, which I really encourage everybody to get some sound processing equipment and to get copying and reciting with her, modelling good spoken English. And these are my contact details if you get stuck and run out of ideas. And this is where to buy the equipment. I hope you have a lot of fun. I hope that you get very excited by it. Most of my clients do and they really do thoroughly enjoy it.